Your Bible says, let your conversation be full of grace and seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Imagine that for an answer. And that's exactly what we do sometimes where we just go off and <clears throat> ah, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I'm Marco. And I'm Bella. Together we're Marco, Marco Bella. Bella. So in our household this past couple of weeks, we have been learning how to communicate better. Mm. It's like a constant journey. I know we've done a video on communication before, but communication changes with the seasons. Right. It depends on what you're going through at the time. It depends on what you need to communicate about as well. As a family, we yeah. have been learning how to communicate better. I think it's interesting because we've got kids now mm -hmm. and that also adds to how we communicate. So you're talking 100%. about seasons. So where sometimes you might be communicating at this level and then you automatically have to switch to this level um, or vice versa. That can create some challenges. And sometimes as a mom, when I'm communicating with my children, I then bring that into my communication with my husband. Wait, so you talk to me like you're talking to Mark? <laughs> Wow. Sometimes. I think like, if I've been telling him off and then like Mark comes and says something to me, I'm still in that like mode and I'm just like... Rah! That's a good point. I should try that with you actually. <laughs> Thanks. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does. He's like, Bethel, you haven't put your plate in the sink. I'm like, Mark, I'm not my cat. Thank you. Peoples. I have been listening to this Bible devotional and it really inspired me. It's on the YouVersion Holy Bible app and they've got loads of plans for different things. So I thought, you know what? Let me listen to a plan about marriage. Because it's always good to listen to stuff about marriage. I mean, we have a great marriage, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we um, I mean, we have a great marriage. <laughs> we have, but the thing is, a good marriage comes with a lot of hard work. People just think that, you know, you get a good marriage just from out of the thin air. And that in a good marriage, you don't go through stuff. We go through a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, doesn't a marriage run pretty much like a system where if you build the structures right... And technically everything should, the cogs should just turn as does the system and it's just a bit of oiling every now and then. Well, that's the oiling we're talking about. We right. need to oil the machine, right? Because right? right, right, right. even if you have an, a fantastic machine and you don't oil it, well, it's not going to run. So It'll have a rust. It'll have a rust. So Mark has also, Mark always reads anyway, but Mark's also been reading and listening to some stuff. Just to improve our relationship. And I think obviously we're, you know, I've been going on my fitness journey and that is changing and transforming me week by week. But then it's also about, okay, so now we're going into a new part of our marriage. We've had our kids. We're going to the next stage. What does that look like? What do we want as a couple? Mm, sorry. This devotional was by David and Tamila Mann. Um, and it's called Us Against the World. And I really have enjoyed it because they've talked about loads of different things. But today I just want to talk about the one that they talked about in terms of communication. And they had that scripture from Colossians 4 verse 6 when it said, as Mark said in the beginning, let your conversation be full of grace. What does that mean to have a conversation that is full of grace? <laughs> well, what is grace in the first place? Oh, gosh. What is grace? I think I'm learning what grace is. <laughs> um, so when I think of grace, the way I think of it is like, for example, if somebody is to come to you and bring literally... Um, fire. <laughs> fire. And they come there, you know, blurting out all sorts of, sort of um, you know... Profanities. Profanities. Not that we bled profanities at each other. Um, <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. Yeah. And then you have the grace, the patience, the wherewithal, the tools, the resources, and the capacity to actually just take all of that, absorb it, and somehow turn it into positive energy. <laughs> I think that is grace. Yeah. I think, obviously, grace is like kindness, um, not riling back. There's like just understanding. understanding. I think it's a simple word, yeah. Um, and long suffering. Long suffering. It it like accumulates all of those patience. things. Patience. Patience. Covering a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and then seasoned with salt. Yeah. I like that part of seasoned with salt. What does that mean? Well, what is salt? We go back to the same thing. Salt adds flavour. It adds mm. that richness to food. Mm. You know, you can have all sorts of ingredients, but if you're lacking salt, mm. mate, that food's not going to taste nice. The food's not going to taste yeah, nice. Yeah, but if you just add a bit yeah. of salt to any kind of food, mm. uh, in most cases, it's going to it's going it's going to taste yeah. okay. I also think salt is also for edifying the conversation. Like, if mm. you're going to have a conversation and the words that are coming out of your mouth, can you hear yeah, the words that are coming out of my mouth? Um, then you are not going to be 
enhancing the conversation. Then it says, so that you might know how to answer everyone. Wait, so if you have grace and you've got salt, then that means you'll be able to answer people. Yeah. What's really interesting is we've had so many conversations with couples lately. Um, some who are on their last leg saying, I'm done. I, I want to end this. Like, I want to divorce today. And yeah, these are Christian couples. Um, and they just don't see a way out. Some are happily married, but actually have not spoken to each other about crucial things that have happened to them individually or even things that have happened within their relationship. Um, and we don't sit here to say like, we're the gurus of everything. But one thing we did commit to ourselves in the beginning of our relationship is that we would talk about everything. As difficult as it could possibly be, we are going to talk about everything. And it doesn't mean we'll always do it in the exact moment, but sometimes we will alert each other to say, there's something I need to talk about. It's hard for me to talk about right now. And it's pretty heavy. But we, we need, need to find a time actually, yeah. that we can talk about it. And I think we have actually had grace, you more than me, but I'm learning and I feel like I've improved for each other when we've got issues. That, like this is gonna hurt. I might say some things that might affect you or impact on you. Um, but we got to talk about it. You're absolutely right in that people should sh share all of the stuff that they're going through. The reason for that is is that, you know, as a team, you're meant to share um, that experience. The journey is for the both of you. And yeah. so if one person's feeling a certain way, that's going to somehow either impede or impact, yeah. impact the other person uh, in, in some Regardless. way. Regardless. And it's Regardless. almost like, you know the scripture that says, defraud not one another? Like, if you're supposed to be one flesh, right? you're holding on to some baggage or you're holding on to some secret that this other person doesn't know about. Essentially, you're defrauding them because whatever you're holding on to is going to impact the way that you act or respond, right? And then they don't even know how to manage it because they don't even, they're not even privy to that information. So it would be really, really good if you have any information that you're holding on to or you've experienced things that you haven't shared with your partner even if you're dating, I would recommend it even to do it before marriage, to share that information so that you can go into the marriage knowing that you have an open platform of communication. But here are some tips as to how you can have positive conversations while taking into context the Colossian scripture. So why is it important to make sure that we take the scripture into context when we're having conversations, Mark? Well, if you think about how people actually talk, talk to each other, for example, if you're going to talk to a child, you really go down to their level mm -hmm. and you use the right pitch, the right tone, mm -hmm. right? You're never going to go to a child and just start, you know, with your face looking really strong and, mm -hmm. you know, your voice being heightened. Um, you have to actually just pitch that and approach that in the right way. Equally, as adults, you'd expect the same. <laughs> but then that's not the case, you know. So sometimes we approach each other at the wrong pitch and at the mm -hmm. wrong kind of wavelength. Yeah. Which is where then the struggles start. And I like the scripture, I think it's in James, linked to this when we start, we talked about how all of these strifes and these wars mm -hmm. in conversation happen because of our own selfish motives. Yeah. So that's what gets in the way. And I think Gracie is saying, if you can take that out and actually have grace instead, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to pitch and yeah. approach that with the right tone and at the right level. Like okay, these are seven tips that they gave in the devotional about how to have good conversation. Tip number one, right? Stick with the issue. Mark, how many times have we had conversations and I have been like, do you remember last year when you did this? And do you remember this? And the <laughs> so what they're saying is, if you are talking about the washing, talk about the washing. Don't start talking about the cooking and the cleaning and everything else. Just talk about one thing, Yeah. right? When that's resolved, you can also go on to the next thing, but don't mix things. That happens, and I have found that that has happened with us. <laughs> like you are talking about washing, then it's linked to some family trauma from wherever. Then that's linked to some other next thing. Then you say, ah, and you know, remember that time 10 years ago? It's because of this thing. And you're like, how did we even get there? Like, what? <laughs> I'm actually just laughing because you know, every time I go, what are we talking about? Because <laughs> Bethel will go, we'll be talking about something, and then she'll just go, yeah, did you put that thing in the oven? Or would you, actually, no, that's actually too much information. She'll say something like, is it in the oven? <laughs> what is? 
What are we talking about the album for? Oh, <laughs> so yeah, try to stick to the same conversation and try not to harm each other with your words. So don't be like, oh yeah, this you did this and then yeah, that reminds me of the time 20 years ago when you forgot to get me tea. Like, no guys, let's just focus on the topic at hand, right? <laughs> Tip number two is listen to understand and don't listen to respond um, in terms of like being reactive. So Mark, you've been doing this this week. Talk about I've that. I've been reading this book just lately. Um, it it's up. called Awake, Wake Up and Live. Um, and he's talking about this idea of most times we just react to situations mm -hmm. rather than actually respond mm -hmm. in a way that we would like to. And so this week, the challenge for me, especially after listening to that sermon that I was listening to, which was cool, it was um, don't turn your friends into enemies. Mm. And so it got me thinking around this idea of sometimes I react to the situation rather than actually respond in a way that I want. Mm. And so I, I set myself up to, to, to task of actually, you know, when I hear something, before I get down into my emotions, Mm. to yeah take a moment to actually think how, how can i respond with grace mm. in a way that's seasoned with salt mm. um, and so it has really helped me actually just to take some time out to think positively about the situation and not really think from a self-preservation point of view again that's yeah. in the sermon that's true um, and you know what I, I can't remember what i was saying to you but there was a distinct moment where mark responded differently and i like I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, normally I know that if I'd said something, oh. I can't even remember what it was, but I know that if Before I'd Before you even finish the statement, yeah. It's like, I know he would have, like, boop. just, you know, got on the edge and whatever, but he responded so, with so much grace, and I was just, like, taken aback. I was like, oh, that was kind of you. And then he was like, yeah, I've been listening to this thing about, you know, listening and actually responding with yeah responding rather than reacting responding rather than reacting and i was like i like this it's true because in most situations i mean our emotions take over i mean for me i know for a fact of you being an aries you know um close to the um uh a uh, taurus and stuff like that and then you know you've got the other end of aries which just literally loses it sometimes <laughs> so i mean we all in our own stars have our own traits mm -hmm. but i know for me for a fact you know um when something is said natural instinct is I will respond and say something but actually uh, react and say something rather um, I want to respond with grace mm -hmm. and buckets of salt um, <laughs> not too salty here. I really like this point that they made about arguments being a gift to a relationship because it allows us to see the things that hurt or trigger our spouses and in turn if we actually respond appropriately um, we learn more about each other and we actually get closer together yeah. and that is about that oneness right the oneness doesn't just come from everything just being great and grand and wonderful it's actually when you go through those difficult moments and you learn more about each other and you grow closer to each other that is when that oneness really becomes a reality I find that when I'm least trusting that's when arguments affect me the most because um, when I'm in a position where I'm actually trusting of the person when I'm trusting mm. you Bethel and I know that you've got my best interest at heart um, I can trust for you to bring up something mm. um, that is meant to help me and help us go forward. Um, yeah. But in the moments when I'm least trusted, when I think maybe you're out to get your own or mm. you're trying to take advantage of me in some way, that's when I just react rather than respond with grace and... I agree. And I feel like salt. I do the same thing sometimes because while well, you openly express to me, like you say, do you think like... I have some malice against you or I'm actually planning to do something to deliberately not be there for you or something like that. And then I have to question myself and go, well, actually, do I really think Mark has that kind of thought process to go, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm look at these eyes, to, look at these eyes. You know, Dove am I going to do this to hurt Bethel specifically? Mm -hmm. And then like, the answer is mostly no. I don't think he's got that level of <laughs> capacity. Mostly, mostly no. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes well. I'm like, yeah, he definitely is trying to get his own time here. Anywho, number three was take some time out before addressing the situation. So if there's something that's really riled you up, you can say, oh, that's really upset me, but I need some time. And then you have mm. to both respect that if the other person's not ready, do not push that because that's just going to end up into some explosion that's not going to work out well. So take some time, go outside, mm. go for a walk, breathe. <laughs> I, I like the way he posted it in the sermon where he said, have you ever argued with someone and got them to actually turn around and go, do you know what? Oh, yeah, I see your point. Wow, you're so right. Do you know what? I'm going to do exactly what you've just said. I don't recall any single argument where that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you've had so. discussions and when you like have grace and you add salt and you answer correctly, 
then yes, you have those moments where the person goes, oh, thank you. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, true. But when you're like, Rah! and you're shouting at each other like that, it never ends well, does it? No. No, we've had no. some moments where it just hasn't ended well. And like, no. I don't like you right now. Unfortunately, I say that to Mark quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, and that's why it's important to take time out. <laughs> Yesterday, I said to Mark, I was like, I don't know why, but I was mad at you today. He's like, really? Tell me something different. If you'd come to me and say, I don't know why, but I'm madly in love with you today, I would have gone, really? No, I said, tell me something new. <laughs> tell me something new. I mean, if you say you don't, you don't like me, right? I was like, oh yeah, pff, that's the norm. I'm used to that. If you'd said to me, oh, I love you, Mark, I'd be like, really? What's happened, Bethel? Oh. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even <laughs> flinch. She was like, yeah, I don't like you right now. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Saying I don't like you doesn't mean I don't love you. Like I will always love you, but sometimes you just grate on me, right? Anywho, guys, that's a totally different topic for another great. day. But I feel like my hormone levels and everything are balancing out way more now. As Rhea is getting older and I'm exercising, things are toning down a lot. Something happened on Sunday where I would have flipped. I would have literally exploded like the old me would have just been like a mess i would have probably needed to i'm a new creation <laughs> wish i had my guitar i'm a brand new man Woo! come on bethel literally i would have literally crumbled i would have probably needed hospitalization but no that's just a joke guys but honestly what i did is i re i recognized something was triggering me i was getting upset i was going to blow and i went I'm gonna go to the shop. <laughs> and I took five. By the way, our shop is only about five minutes away, but this shopping trip lasted an hour. All about an hour and a half. <laughs> no, it, well, I actually went to a shop that was far away, 25 minutes away, to go and get the fan. Anywho, needless to say, I, it allowed me to call a friend, and you know who you are. Hmm. I called a friend, <laughs> and I was like, What's that from? Call a friend? That's from Who Wants, who wants to, be to Be a Millionaire. millionaire. Yeah. yeah, I was like, Help! I am about to blow. Help me settle down. And she did, and she gave me really sound biblical advice, and she helped me to just be like, it's going to be okay. Go back home, and this is what you're gonna do. And I was like, okay, cool. And yeah, it worked out really, really well. It did. Um, so take five, guys, if you need to. Number four was, never make the issue more important than the marriage. And I really like this one, because some of the people that we have talked to have been like, it's over we are over, there's nothing, there's nothing that can repair this, right? And it's not to minimize what their lived experience is, but because they have allowed the issue to become the main focus, yeah. they've not thought, well, actually, our marriage is more important than this issue, and we're going to do whatever work it takes to, f to mend this and to repair this so that our marriage can continue. Right. Again, it depends what marriage means to you. Yeah. If marriage is just, you know, you're supposed to entertain me and um, do service for me, then, yeah, when you have those arguments, in those moments, you can literally turn around and go, do you know what? Say yeah. I'll replace you. <laughs> um, and nowadays, but, I guess, because divorce is so common, it's just like one of those words that just flips out of your mouth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to divorce. Again. If your arguments are greater than the marriage itself, mm -hmm. then, you know, there's definitely a need for you to take inventory to look, to sit back and look at what does this marriage mean to us? Yeah. And how is it that we need to reframe how we view it? Mm -hmm. And somebody mm -hmm. once said, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, mm -hmm. which is where the take fires come, comes, you know, comes back into play. Yeah. Um, and so you need to then reevaluate and probably talk through what marriage really means to you. And for yes. us, it's about companionship, it's about, Actually, we are going to have some struggles. Mm. You know, it's not going to be easy. It's no. going to take a constant effort. Yeah. But at the same time, we, you know, recognize the fact that, yeah, you might have arguments, but that's part and parcel. They're gifts, as yeah. we just heard. Mm -hmm. And so the focus should be on, you know, let's build on the, the values that we hold together. The fact that we are, as a couple, we believe in, uh, you know, we have the same faith, mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. we have the same goals. We look to achieve the same kind of things. Uh, exactly. And one thing that we promised ourselves in courtship, so when we were still boyfriend and girlfriend, everything was still fiery and lovely, it still is fiery and lovely, but in a different way. Um, we said to each other that we wanted a supernova marriage. And Mark was like, do you know what a supernova star is made of? I was like, And no. we asked them over the weekend what a supernova was, and they said it was a uh, dust. Oh, dust. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> well, the person kept going, oh, Marco Bella, you're such a cute couple, you're such a cute couple. And we're like, yeah, we're such a cute couple, but being such a cute couple is hard work. And they're like, really? What do you mean? And we were like, do you know what a supernova star is made from? They're like, no. You're like, dust. <laughs> what? A supernova star is made from millions or billions of tiny explosions.
emotions. So that's how it shines bright. <laughs> so we have millions and billions of tiny explosions that help us to shine bright. Yeah. <laughs> but our explosions, I mean, like, I don't think I've ever said, I'll divorce you or I'm going to leave you in our argument. You'd be remiss if you said that. As in, <laughs> that would be such a loss. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. <gasps> well, of course it would be. But I think it's never been on the cards where I'm like, it's never I've been said, on the cards. I have said things like, I, I could see people divorcing over something like this and I can understand why they would say. Have you? Yeah. Really? Because like the thing is like, if divorce is on the table, there are some things that you'll go through in marriage where you'll go, nah, I'm out. I'm not, I'm just not going through this. But if divorce is not on the table, and we're not talking about life-threatening situations, guys. Like if, if you're in abusive or, relationship yeah, yeah, or life-threatening, yeah. that's a different topic. But if things happen um, in your marriage, like maybe somebody's not, not fruitful, or somebody keeps doing this reoccurring thing that keeps hurting you, right? Um, there, is, there is grace, because Jesus came to save all of us. And if, you, if your marriage is founded on Christ, there is grace. There is a way out, Right? But if, you're, if your first call is to say, I'm out of this relationship, then you might never find the freedom from that thing within your relationship. So the next one was, don't go to bed with unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Now, how many of you have gone to bed angry? Or should we say, how many of you have probably had 365 or more sleepless nights because you're actually holding on to stuff? I think we made it a point at the very beginning where we just, um, I mean, initially I know I struggled with actually communicating, so yes. being able to articulate that what I was struggling was. with. Yeah. Um, but it, obviously at the back of our minds and, you know, we've always been open about actually having conversation on the, do on the day. Yes. It might not be in the moment, but definitely on the day. Yeah. And so that we wouldn't go to bed with any kind of unresolved issues. Anger. And you know what? There's been moments when I've gone, I'm really upset with you, but I don't even want to talk to you and it's like bedtime, right? And I have gone to sleep upset. And mm. tossing and turning in the night. And that, also that could be a song. Shaking. That's, that's a Disney song. Shaking yeah. with dreams. And tossing and turning and shaking with dreams. <laughs> so anywho, um, those nights have not ended well. And then I've either no. had to wake up in the middle of the night or in the first thing in the morning and I'm like, okay, I was so angry with you, but I couldn't talk because I was tired. But here's the problem. So if you can, try not to go to bed angry. Try to talk about it. You might not get a complete resolve on the mm. first day, but yeah. at least just release that anger, release that pain, right? So one of the greatest lessons for me of late has been this idea of self-preservation, mm. which is I'm looking to protect myself either from hurt mm. uh, or from being hurt again. And so what I do is I protect myself. Either I don't say what I need to say mm -hmm. or I withhold information or I try to say something to defend myself. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm learning to do is actually to be vulnerable yeah. um, and to allow myself to go to that space where I'm able to share with grace and season everything with salt. It's not always easy, mm -hmm. but if I put myself in the place of Jesus where he was able to sacrifice himself to win others, and I think there's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm. I mean, it works in the same way even within yeah, the home, relationships, yeah. you know, with relationships. And so that though, the, those are tools and resources that we could use. Um, but just coming back to the life of Jesus Christ, how he was able to sacrifice himself. So in a lot of the conversations, there's a great deal of compromise that's required. And so when we're talking about stuff, uh, or when you're having an argument, it's really difficult, especially when there's ego at play and maybe you're feeling that actually this person doesn't quite understand me and I don't mm. trust you at the moment. Mm. You know, you're, it seems like you're trying to take advantage of me. And so we try to protect ourselves. And so I'm learning to actually just in the moment, just relinquish all the ego and, you know, self-preservation. I think it has helped um, us because whenever you act with grace, just the way that you act checks me. So when you Continue. rile back, then I'm like, okay, <laughs> you Let's know, like, you want to go? Game. Let's go. Sorry, that's just a joke, but no, for reals, like that's human nature, right? Human if somebody nature. comes at you with fire and then you're going to come back with fire, you know what I mean? So when, whenever Mark just shows me that grace and I'm like, I look at myself and I go, oh man, yeesh. You know, and I and I do that self-checking and I suppose it's the Holy Spirit that talks to me and goes, wow, okay, you know, you need to just check yourself mm -hmm. and how you're mm -hmm. talking to your husband and things yeah. like that. Mm. And that is what we're supposed to really emulate, mm. um, which is why the scripture is saying, you know, with grace, full of grace, not yeah. just not, not 
half empty yeah. or half full, oh, <laughs> if you're optimistic, uh, but full of grace. Um, and, you know, most people are probably wondering, so how do I, how do I know what to do? Where do I go? What do I do? I think it's important to ask for help. Mm -hmm. um, where do you ask for help? Well, you can ask friends, people that you trust. You mm -hmm. can ask the person that you're actually cooped up with. Yeah. Now, they might be able to help. But I think, if mm -hmm. anything, the more vulnerable we are with each other and we just own up about where we are, because sometimes you can come back and say, do you know what? The reason I spoke to you like that was because of this. And I'm yes. really sorry, actually, that that happened. That's not what I meant to do. That's not me. Um, yes, Normally, there's true. something else going that's on true. and I'm actually freaking out about something else and then it just comes out. Yeah. And the other thing I'd say is, I know there's a lot of stuff out there on social media, Instagram and all these sort of places, which are great. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think it's important to actually immerse yourself in something that is more fulfilling. For example, yeah. when you read a book around that topic, mm -hmm. so how can I communicate better? It actually yeah. takes you through a program where you're actually immersing yourself into stages of how to be better in that area. Yeah. I mean, it's all skills, right? It's all communication is a skill, right? Talking to each other is a skill. So get help. The book of James is really good for that because he just talks to who we are as people and how mm -hmm. we struggle with a lot of things actually. Yeah. So the book of James would be a really good one. That's in the King James Bible uh, <laughs> or in the Bible, whichever version yeah, you Yeah, and there's so many biblical characters that you can look at and you think, okay, how did they deal with the situation? Okay, how can I... Zephra. <laughs> or Zephora, <laughs> some of you call And you can then go, how can I apply that to my current situation? You know? Yeah. And the last one is let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So many times you want to hold on and say, oh, but you did this to me and you did that to me and oh gosh. And then really that bitterness just go, grows and grows and grows into your soul. Um, but really you just need to let it go. And we've been listening to Letting Go of the Rope and it is so, so powerful. Mm. The minister starts talking about love and the importance of love and, and all the scriptures and quotations around how love is and how it acts and how it's so selfless and it's charitable. It's so giving, it's kind, it's all of these things and how... As Christians, that is what we're supposed to express in terms of love. And then he goes into love linked to forgiveness, right? Love mm. is forgiving. Um, and we don't only forgive for the other person. We actually forgive to set ourselves free, to let go. And he gives this amazing analogy about, you know, when the bells of a church are ringing, they ring because somebody is pulling the rope, right? And initially when they're pulling, it's hard to get that momentum going. But once the momentum starts going, it's ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, and this loud ringing, right? And so what he was saying is, if you have an issue with somebody and then that bell keeps ringing and you start talking to other people and it becomes a gossip mill and all this kind of stuff, you know, and even in terms of your own relationship, mm -hmm. if you're not talking to your friends about it, and I can't believe he did that, I can't believe he did that, oh my gosh, and that bell is just going ding dong, ding, and it's really ringing in your ear. He said, let go of the rope. Stop yeah. ringing the bell. <laughs> Stop yeah. reminding and reminding and reminding. Let go and forgive. And eventually that momentum will reduce. Yeah. As you yeah. continue in prayer and love, as you continue in your positive conversation with grace and salt, <laughs> you will get to a place where the bell stops ringing. Mm. And I think it's also important to actually just... For yourself, imagine what kind of responses you would like to give. Because sometimes mm. we put ourselves in situations where we haven't thought it through, we're just reacting to what's going on. Mm. So if you could actually picture and imagine and visualise the person you'd want to be, mm. you know, how you'd want to respond, where in any given situation, like what Jesus did, where he was, you know, standing in front of Pontius Pilate, mm -hmm. and he was saying all sorts of stuff to him, he didn't say a single word. Nope. It was only in that moment he said, nah, nah, hang on, the okay. power is not given unto you. Um, so yeah, just think, have a, have a think about that. Just visualize what you, how you'd like to respond in situations. I've reflected on some of the situations where I've spoken to Bethel a certain way. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, hang on, I, I know I can do better than that. Yeah. Uh, and then come back and said, you know what, I'm really sorry. Um, and done it better. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for being with us on another episode. Like and subscribe if you haven't done already. And we'll see you on the other side. And it'd be good to know how you're getting on with your conversations, you know. How's that uh, grace cup working for you? And uh, the salt shaker. <laughs> Leave some comments below and let us know if you use any of these tips and how they work out for you. Bye.